we go! What's going on, Cowboy Nation and angry Cowboy fans around the world? Y'all know who it is. It's your man, the Angry Cowboys fan. And you are listening to the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast, the place to find my raw and uncut in podcast form. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a really good show for you today. We got a show that's coming off the top of the dome. No bullet points, no nothing. I just want to talk to you guys. I just want stuff to come off my heart to you guys. You know, because you guys are as important as family. Dallas Cowboys family. But speaking of family, I really got to talk to you guys because I know I didn't have I didn't have a thumbnail or a notification come out, but I was on the big time podcast. I was on the big time show uh, the other day. And, um, you know, it was one of those things like he describes through the bat signal out there and. I was like, or I threw the bat signal out and he answered the call or vice versa, however you want to look at it. But we were able to collaborate on a live and we had a, a few of Cowboys Nation's faithful, you know, just dropping in and giving their raw and uncut, giving their two cents when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. We also had you know, fans from another team and they were given their raw and uncut when it came to their team and we're able to hash some things out too. But most importantly, something happens on the big time show. And what happens is we could be talking football. We could be talking Dallas Cowboys or, or football or even basketball. And then life happens and it gets real. And we can have those conversation as men and women. We can have those conversations and it's just a dope experience. But in that experience, I shared with Big Time's audience. And if you were there and you're an Angry Cowboys fan, family member, I shared the fact that, you know, my brother is back in the hospital. Um, He has an infection in that amputated foot. And that's why I haven't made a video because, you know, my brother's my best friend, you know, since I was born, since a young wee little lad, my brother has been my best friend. He's been the person that I look up to. He has been the person that has been by my side through it all, you know, through all the trials and tribulations he has been there. And right now he's going through a trial and tribulation himself and I got to be there. I can't be there physically because we stay like almost 900 miles apart, but I want to be there emotionally, you know, spiritually, because we both believe in God and we believe that he got him, you know, so that's where the absence comes from, you know, as far as making the videos. And I wanted to let you guys know that. So I put it in the community tab, but I also talked about it on the big time show and it got a little emotional. And there was a misunderstanding on my part. Um, You know, there's a guy, Houston Texans fan. If you're watching this video, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I don't have to mention a name, but um, I misunderstood what he was saying. He was going at another fan and I took it as he was going against, you know, he was going toward me. And, you know, it was a complete misunderstanding, but I was wrong. Just put it that way. I was wrong. He may come in these chats. He may troll the Dallas Cowboys. You know, he may troll the Houston Texans are better than the Cowboys and stuff like that. But at his heart, you could tell us something different. I, you know, I gave him props for um, donating to other Cowboys content creators. You know, I saw that and I'm like, man, you know, I got this dude blocked. Let me, let me, let me do my due diligence. Let me do my research and everything. And, Dude is a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Along with another, a Philadelphia Eagles fan. Cool dudes. You know, we were able to talk during that live. And yeah. So welcome back, guys. I mean, I know I'm going to get the trolling in the in the chats and everything. But uh, welcome back. It's family. It's love. I appreciate 
I appreciate the prayers. I, you know, I appreciate y'all keeping my family in your prayers and everything. You know, you're not a Dallas Cowboy fan. It, it was dope. It was dope. But, um, yeah, that's the thing that I wanted to talk about. It's like football is football. You know, the season is the season. This is real life. Real life things happen. And I hate football being that division you know what i'm saying because i like this team and you like this team we got to be divided no it doesn't have to be that way you know you can like the philadelphia eagles and i can like the dallas cowboys and we can still coexist you know what i'm saying that's one of the myths about being an nfl fan like if you're not the same you know if you're not the fan of the same team that i am then especially in my division You are a rival in life. Nah, that ain't the case. You know what I'm saying? That's not the case at all. It shouldn't be the case. I know it's not the case for me. But when that whistle blows and the game starts, okay, we're competitors. You know, just like the people on the field, we are competitors. But when the last whistle blows and the game's over, whether who wins or loses, we all win because we got to see good quality football. And we all win because we can leave that game and be like, yo, that was a good game, bro. Yeah, your team sucks. Yeah, y'all beat us, but uh, where you want to go for drinks? That's what I'm talking about. I see these fools at the stadium. They be getting into fights with each other and stuff like that, like throwing blows, fist to cuffs, if you know, if you a older gentleman like I am. But <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand how a sport can get somebody so divided. And I'm seeing that in Cowboys Nation. I'm seeing that in content creation. It's like, man, I feel like this. I feel like this. In any type of content creation, you're going to have different points of, of view. That's why it's unique. You know, that's why content creation is great because you have more than one or two perspectives. You have perspectives from cowboy content creators that will align with how you believe in the team. Some won't actually line up with how you believe. And that's okay. That's the thing that I understand. It's okay to have differences of opinions and still get along. A hundred, keep it a buck. You can have differences of opinions and still have each other over for dinner. Have your family over for dinner. How you doing? I hope you succeeding. You don't have to be assholes to each other. You know what I'm saying? Outside of the football field, even in the stadium, you don't have to be assholes to one another. I should be able to go to a Philadelphia Eagles game with my Dallas Cowboys shirt on and feel safe like I can watch the damn game. A Philadelphia Eagles should be able to come to Jerry's world with his Philadelphia Eagles apparel and feel safe. You got these idiots out there that just want to throw blows at each other for what? Ain't nobody paying us from this organization. Ain't nobody have security with us in this organization. No, you going to get your ass kicked. You going to go to the hospital. You going to beat him up and you going to jail. Jerry Jones ain't bailing you out. You know, Robert Kraft ain't coming to bail you out. So I just don't get it. I just don't get the division. People have differences of ideology when it comes to their team. People have differences of opinions on how the team should be run and how the team can succeed. I get that. And I applaud that. Have your own thoughts. I don't want everybody to come up here and just be mindless machines and say the same thing all the time. No, no. Have your own opinion. There's some people out there that love Dak Prescott. Great, great. There's some people out there that hate Dak Prescott, the player. Okay, I get it. Dak may not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's not on me to come over there and try to convert the non-Dak believer and the non-Dak believer shouldn't be trying to be up in the comment section trying to convert somebody that actually has faith in their quarterback. It shouldn't be that. You got your opinion, I got mine. I will find the content creator that aligns more with my beliefs of the team. And 
just talking about other content creators in a bad light, I don't I don't like it. I don't rock like that. If there's somebody out there that don't like Dak Prescott, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of content creators that don't, that don't mean that I'm going to hate that person. That don't mean I'm going to hate on that person. Get your bag. You know what I'm saying? And this is what the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast is about. You know, we're going to be talking Dallas Cowboy talk, but we also going to be talking real talk. You know what I'm saying? What's on your mind? What's on your heart, Cowboys Nation? Whatever, whatever is on your heart. Speak about it when it comes to this team. You know, I don't want to hear no death threats or anything like that in the chat section. No, but whatever is on your mind about this team, give me your raw and uncut. Real talk. Damn, I done spent 11 minutes just talking about that. But I could talk about that all day just for the simple fact I'm a man about unity. I'm a man that wants to see our fan base coexist i want to see our fan base be on the same page you know what i'm saying a lot of people there's the patient ones and there's the impatient ones the patient ones know this like okay i'm gonna see what they do for us i'm gonna see what the team we were able to assemble is gonna go out there and do the impatient one is like, they better make it to an NFC championship game this year. It's impatient. Forgetting about the whole overarching narrative that we are here to be entertained. We are here to be entertained. It's sports entertainment. I get it that the biggest prize is the Super Bowl. But you can't sit there and knock because somebody doesn't make it to the Super Bowl every single year. You know, you just can't knock that like... If we don't make it to an NFC championship, it was a bad season. How can you get to that point? If we don't get to the NFC championship, it's a bad season. Everybody frowns on that 12 and 5 as if it was given to us, as if it was predestined to us. No, they had to work for that. And they got it. They landed it three years in a row. And I know a lot of people back in those offseason were talking about the Dallas Cowboys as not making moves. We are doing pretty much the same stuff that we have always done. And for some reason this year, it's the worst. We have had bad offseason, season after season after season. But see, that is another thing that it poses the question. Business as usual. Is it working for us? Is business as usual working for the Dallas Cowboys? Because I would beg to differ. You know, Jerry Jones doing, well, I can't say Jerry, both Jerry and Steven. They are doing the same things that they have done year after year after year. And nothing has changed. Everybody thinks that Cowboys Nation is so pissed off and they're so wound up because business as usual you don't think the players are as wound up as we are go out there and give their best give 12 and 5 three seasons in a row and then just go to the playoffs and get smacked in the mouth because the coach didn't have them ready that has to be that has to be pretty nerve wracking in itself you know what i'm saying cowboys nation so we're not the only ones that want the super bowl we're not the only ones that's given our all for this team the players out there are doing the exact same thing and i wish that the front office would reciprocate those feelings and start treating this team as an as a priority Like people keep saying, and I keep hearing this narrative, the narrative of you can't sign all three of them. You can't sign all three of them. Like, why can't you? Why can't you? Charles Haley was talking about, you know, the the bill is due. He has been backloading the contract so much that the bill is due. Continue to backload them. Continue. You are going to be doing that throughout this franchise's existence. It's not like you're going to be like every single year, like, yep, we're up to code, we're up, we're good, zeros. No, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So what you do, you continue to kick the can down the road. Because honestly, Cowboys Nation, if we were to get a couple pieces, we would be contenders. If we were able to get like three Really good to great pieces, we would be contenders. And I mean, I know the four and three letter networks are saying that we're contenders now, but even more so. Like, if we were to get that 
nose tackle or that defensive tackle that was plugging up the middle. We were able to get that. If we were able to get a good to great running back or get great production out of our run room, and I call it the run room, the running back room. If we were able to get good production, great production out of the running back room, and if we were to get another wide receiver, that's why I was banging on the table to get Keon Coleman or somebody comparable, even Brendan Rice. I was banging on the table for that. I mean, one, because you got security with um, C.D. Lamb, just in case he tries to hold out. And two, you have another weapon on the other side of the field. And I'm not saying that Brendan Cooks isn't a weapon, but what I'm saying is you add to that, whew, the Dallas Cowboys could be dangerous. I mean, you look at the Miami Dolphins. They got Waddle, Hill, and now OBJ. They have a dope wide receiver core. The Dallas Cowboys, do we stack up to that? You know, so I feel if they were to just like, yo, continue to you're going you're going to continue to do business as you've done it years past. Why is kicking the can down the road now so horrible? And it wasn't two years ago, three years ago. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm going straight off the dome with this. This is the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast. And if you're down with the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Give me a hell yeah in the chats. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, right now, I just want to bring up somebody on the defense. Somebody I've seen videos of, you know, after the injury is doing really well. Vert's looking really good. Hopping the hurdles. Like I've said, Cowboys Nation, please, for the love of goodness, don't rush Trayvon Diggs back. Don't rush him back. I don't want to see him out there week one matching up against Amari Cooper. Not unless we're up by like 21, 24. (sighs) But if we're up, it's the fourth quarter, and you want to see if Diggs can handle the NFL capacity on that knee, please put him in. But don't make that the, the first pick. Don't make him the starter. Real talk. That's why I've been banging the table on Stefan Gilmore. Bring him back. Bring him back for what you brought him there for. You know, I know he thinks that he can get more, but if he could get more, he wouldn't be a free agent right now. Give him what you brought them there for, you know, so we can continue this. We got unfinished business, Cowboys Nation. We have unfinished business. And right now, the NFL has the Dallas Cowboys third in the NFC to make the Super Bowl. Dang, we ain't even had a snap in the preseason. And they talking about third in the NFC. So they must not think that this roster is that bad to consider us like that. But the thing is, I I think it's more like... They put so much expectation on the Dallas Cowboys and they get so disappointed when they don't live up to the four and three letter network standards. And I feel like a lot of Cowboys Nation does that. You guys do that. You let the four and three letter networks dictate what good is without allowing your eyes to dictate what good is. 12 and 5, I'm sorry, that's a good damn season. Did we do good in the playoffs? There's a couple playoffs where we did, but we got bumped in the divisional round. And there was three playoffs where we kind of wet the bed. And honestly, I was looking at a play with a minute and something left. 49ers game. The line broke down. Dak Prescott scrambled, threw it up, tried to throw it to Cedric Wilson. And Cedric Wilson couldn't track the ball properly. That would have put us at, what, the 15-yard line with a minute and something left on the clock. That's Dak Prescott's fault. See? See, I don't even want to get on that. I don't want to get on that soapbox. Y'all know how I feel. But as far as Trayvon Diggs, I want to see him walk back into that defense so that we can have him if we make a playoff run. We can have him ready, primed, ready to go toward the middle and end of the season. The first game of the season, he better not be in this, um, in any of the scrimmages we have at training camp. He better not be in them. He better not be in them. We are not trying to lose Trayvon Diggs again. Walk this man in, allow him to settle in, him and DeMarvey and Overshone. 
Allow them to settle in. Don't rush him like you rushed Michael Gallup because Michael Gallup wasn't the same after you did it. Don't rush him. Let him take his time. He's looking good. He's looking good in these videos. He is. And I hope he comes back to prime time Trayvon Diggs getting them picks. Getting them picks. Looking like a wide receiver on the defense. I want to see that. But I don't want that to be rushed. So hopefully the cornerback that we picked up from the draft and everything, we can he can, you know, do some good out there. I mean, we got we got D Bland, we got Jordan Lewis, you know. Um, I ain't looking at the roster right now, but um I can give you some more names. But we got some good we got some good um cornerbacks, but I think we need another cornerback. Honestly. A defensive tackle, another cornerback, and we need a running back. But as far as, and I'm going to get off the Trayvon Diggs situation. Y'all know how I feel about that. But as far as the offense, I'm going to talk about the offensive line real quick. The offensive line, week one against the Browns. Tyler Guyton has to face up with Miles Garrett. There's people, including myself, I've said that don't rush Tyler Guyton out there again. Don't throw him into the fire. Don't throw him into the wolves. And there's some out there that's like, that's what we drafted him for. Throw him out there. He's going to have to get the reps somehow. And I understand that. I completely get that. But I believe it was um, Brian Broaddus that brought this up. He said, this is what you drafted him for. If we go out there and Tyler Guyton, whom you drafted number one overall, doesn't start and doesn't get the reps, it's going to look like a Mozzie Smith situation all over again. You know, like y'all got this guy knowing that he was an NFL project and you expected him to take Tyron Smith's place. So if you don't bring him out there the first snap of the game or in the game, then we're going to look like fools. We are going to look like fools. So do you place Guyton out there? Do you give him limited reps? Uh, you know, I think that should happen. But just have that backup. Just have that backup. And honestly, the backup situation for me, the line that it would be for me, we're going to start from right tackle. Obviously, right tackle is Terrence Steele. We have Terrence Steele. Then we have Zach Martin. Then you have Brock Hoffman at center put Brock Hoffman at center then you have Cooper BB at guard and then Tyler Smith at left tackle that should be the line going in that's that's the line that gives me hope that's the that's what gives me hope because when I look at the line I'm like okay we have these question marks we have the question marks with Tyler Guyton and we have the question mark with Cooper BB um but we know that Cooper BB is a dog at the guard position. We know that. We know that as a matter of fact, because this is what he played in college. We know he will be a dog there. We know that Tyler Smith can hold up and be a dog at the left tackle position to keep Dak Prescott upright. And with Zeke Elliott in the backfield giving chip blocks or even picking up the pass rush, that's security. That's time in the pocket. I don't see that pocket collapsing. You know, that's the line that I would go for. If Tyler Guyton, you know, the regular starting lineup would probably be like um, left tackle, left tackle, Tyler Guyton, left guard, um, Tyler Smith. Center would be Brock Hoffman, um, right guard, Zach Martin, right tackle, you know, Terrence Steele. I think that's going to be the line going into week one, even though they were like Cooper BB at that center position. But all iterations of that line look good. There was a time when the Dallas Cowboys had to scab together a offensive line and it wasn't cohesive. This whole iteration of the offensive line and the men that you have in there, even with Chuma Idoga, and men like that, you have a security there. We have a good offensive line, like first team and second team. If you need to mix and match on the first squad, we still have a good offensive line, and we really need to take advantage of that this season. 
Like, I truly think on the offensive side of the ball, the thing that is missing, even if we run with the running back room that we have, even if we run with that, if we have another wide receiver, if we have a dog at the wide receiver position, making a CD lamb, Brendan cooks and the dog, there's nothing we can do on that offense for real. Third and three, you can give it to Zeke. Third and three, you can give it to Dowdle. Royce Freeman, he looked pretty good when he got snaps in Los Angeles. He looked pretty good. So just because we have the makeshift running back room doesn't mean that we're just going to be the worst in the league. I think these guys have something. We just need that wide receiver three to step up. Whether it's you know, whether it's um, Jalen Tobert, whether it's Jalen Brooks, we need that jump to happen. Like Luke Schoonmaker, you need to make a jump. You don't went out there, drop passes. You got a couple touchdowns, but you drop passes and you got injured. You need to step up and show us why we drafted you. Mozzie Smith has to do the exact same thing. That whole draft class has to do the same thing it's like our last year's draft was non-existent it just seems so non-existent but i got a feeling this year's draft picks are gonna make some damage and i'm personally looking at maris leofile you know i'm looking at him to be a, a difference maker on this team this year you know with the guidance of eric kendrick's I think he's going to be a different a difference maker this year, Cowboys Nation. Real talk. Marshawn Nealon. I got a feeling that he is going to be a difference maker this year. And actually, that was something that me and Big Time talked about. The thought of Mike Zimmer moving Marshawn Nealon in as a defensive tackle Uh, You know, I can see it happening. I can see it happening, but I honestly wish that they would go out and get a big back defensive tackle, you know, in free agency. I know there is not too much to choose from. And they got a few names on there that the Cowboys, they just got to do something. And everybody knows that the Dallas Cowboys don't do anything in free agency. And that's what sucks about them. But As far as on defense, that's really the only question mark that I have is uh, the defensive tackle position and the need for one more cornerback. But other than that, I think our defense is going to be solid. You know, we are going to have to be able to stop this run and and call and make the quarterbacks have to pass. We got to stop the run. And I wish we would stop relying on sacks and interceptions. Real talk on the offensive side of the ball. I think that wide receiver three position is the big question mark. If we have that and we have cohesion at that position, I I believe that the offense will click and we will be the number one scoring offense yet again. But this time in the second year of Mike McCarthy's West West Coast style offense, the Texas, the the Texas, I see. I always want to say the Texas toast, the Texas coast offense. I always want to say Texas toast. Maybe I'm hungry. But anyway, the Texas Coast offense, second year in it. I believe Mike McCarthy is going to show us a little something. The only thing that you got to work on, Mike, situational football. Please work on the situational football because that's what the playoffs are. They're situational football. You know, it comes down to the nooks and the crannies. It it comes down to the I's dotted and the T's crossed in the playoffs. You know, when you have an issue with that in the regular season, it's going to come back to bite you in the playoffs. So you got to work on that, Mike McCarthy. Dak Prescott, you got to work on the deer in the headlights look when things have to go off script early in the game. When Green Bay scored, deer in headlights because it wasn't on script. People dropping passes, deer in headlights look. Like that whole team looked like a deer in headlights. That's what we have to work on. 
And one thing I want to see from this entire organization, I don't want to see when we have to face the San Francisco 49ers that we are saying, this is the game. This is the game that we're looking for. This is our litmus test. This is the bar. Stop making it your Super Bowl in the middle of the season because you go in there and you give your all and you give all of your energy, win or lose. That was your Super Bowl for the season. Stop it. Stop, stop, stop. You got to go in Levi Stadium because I believe we go to Levi Stadium yet again. You got to go in there and you got to have the mentality that I'm better than you and I'm going to beat you. Business as usual. Cowboys Nation, like y'all love to do, business as usual. Go in there and you put your foot in their mouth. You get that payback from what they have done to you the past three damn times. You don't make it your Super Bowl. You make the Super Bowl the Super Bowl. You make the NFC Championship game the NFC Championship game. That's what you do. They are of the same importance. Every single damn game of the regular season and the playoffs should be of the same importance. We got to go in there and we got to get it done. Ain't no game the Super Bowl except the Super Bowl. Real talk. That's what we got to do, Cowboys Nation. And I hope we do that. I truly hope we do that. We are, I believe, three days away from the Dallas Cowboys reporting to training camp in Oxnard. I know that I usually have the background of Oxnard on my videos and everything, but I'm not in Oxnard. (laughs) I'm not in Oxnard. I'm on the East Coast, and I wish I could go to Oxnard, but I don't have the bread for it. But hey, maybe you guys can help send me not this year but next year to next year's training camp because it's going to be exciting y'all know it's going to be exciting with the whole Dak Prescott situation if they don't get him signed so maybe we can start a fund on the on the cash app and the paypal for the Oxnard trip for the 2025 off season and I'll be putting in what I can as well so we can get out there and get some representation for Cowboys Nation. And I mean, I know we got a lot of dope content creators that go out there. That's another reason why I want to go out there is to meet the people that I look up to, to meet the Law Nations, to meet the DAC Attacks, to meet the um, Mark Holmes and Game Time Brian, if he ever decided to go, and just all these people, Landlord, West Coast, you know, um, Jay Tuck, and when I go in the Naming people, I know I forget a lot of people. Craven Cowboys is going out there. You know, I'm, I'm going to be forgetting a lot of people, but rest assured, you know, charge it to my head, not my heart. And I hate to steal that from Law Nation, but it's the real deal. You know, I'm, I forget. But with that being said, Cowboys Nation, it's going to be exciting. The position battles are going to be exciting. The outcome of those position battles are going to be exciting. I can't wait to see Trey Lance on the field. I can't wait to see it. I don't want to go in there sounding like a hater, like, no, no, Trey Lance. We don't want Trey Lance. But at the same time, I just truly feel that Trey Lance is getting robbed of his opportunities. He's getting robbed. He doesn't have... And he doesn't have a future to where it looks like he's going to get a QB1 position, not here at the Dallas Cowboys. Everybody's talking about the fact that, oh, he can go in the game. He's going to have a good preseason. It's like, why did we all of a sudden promote Trey Lance over Cooper Rush? A person that some people say that could take over this team and work effectively. Why did we just bump Trey Lance over Cooper Rush? And Cooper Rush be damned. He's not gonna, he's not gonna just hand his job over to Trey Lance. I don't give a damn what the organization wants. I'm going to fight for my position. And so that position battle is gonna be dope. Yes, we're gonna get to see Trey Lance in the preseason. We're gonna get to see that. But we're gonna get to see Cooper Rush too. We've seen Cooper Rush. We've seen Cooper Rush in primetime games. We have seen Cooper Rush win, what was it, 5-1? and one? Yet, they were against the tomato cans and everything, but he still went 5-1. and one. He still had a good performance as a backup. We know that he is a reliable backup, that he can get it done when the lights are bright. I won't say the brightest, but bright. He can do that. We don't know if Trey Lance can do that. And another thing I said on Big Time Show 
in a quarterback, whenever the pocket breaks down, I don't want his first instinct to run. I don't want that. Some people may want that, eh, whatever. But my thing is, I want my quarterback, when he sees the pocket collapsing, to be able to roll out, extend the play, create another pocket, and get a throw off. If he can't do that, then yes, he's going to have to tuck and run. There are times where you do have to just tuck it and run. But Trey Lance, in the videos that I've seen, in the in the play that I've seen, that has been the go-to. The first read isn't there, so it's boom, take off. That gets you hurt, dude. That gets you hurt. And then let's say, you know, we let Dak and Coop go. We relying on Trey Lance, boom, get hurt. Who are we relying on now? That's why I I have the argument with the whole Dak Prescott letting him walk thing is because we are not equipped right now to allow him to walk and feel comfortable and feel safe that we can be contenders to even make it to the playoffs, let alone the Super Bowl. That's why I'm like, take your time. You've taken your time with signing Dak Prescott, his first contract, Take your time in moving off of him. Not not like him being here 35 years or whatever. I know that's irrational, but not him being here 20 years and stuff like that. But this next contract, the second contract for Dak Prescott, that's when you move off of him. You don't make the irrational cut your nose off despite your face move. Just moving off of him, bam, with nothing to back him up. You know, Cooper Rush is great, but I don't think it's going to get us over the hump. You know, Trey Lance may be a good opportunity, but it's not what's going to get us over the hump. And to keep it a buck, Cowboys Nation, what's going to get us over the hump is us not doing business as usual. You see how that all came full circle? Business as usual is what's hurting this organization that has hurt that has hurt this organization time and time again. Business as usual is not working. It's time to switch it up. It's time to switch it up so that we can get to places we haven't been in over 25 years, 29 to be exact. We got to switch it up, Cowboys Nation. But as far as the fans, we got to come together, y'all. It's just looking crazy. There's so many fan bases out there that's be like, shoot, give us Dak. We'll take Dak. Yeah, we'll take Dak in a heartbeat. Give us Dak. Our own fan base can't even see that we have something good. We can't see that. We want more. You know, from forget forget the chick that's yeah, she's she's a she's a nickel. No, we want the dime. We want the dime. And you keep looking at it, looking at it like that, you may miss out on great opportunities. And Dak Prescott being one of those great opportunities, if you put any type of stock in putting a team around him, you look at the teams that we've had. The teams weren't placed around him. We drafted them like that. I'm talking about pieces that are strategically placed. Amari Cooper was strategically placed because Jerry Jones saw that he didn't have an option at the wide receiver one position. And we were getting hurt because of it. So, boom, Amari Cooper was put there. But a majority of everybody else, Brandon Cooks, he was put there. But a majority of everybody else was drafted. Was homegrown. You know, so making those those choices and decisions is like we can't get over the hump with the homegrown players we need somebody from the outside that's gonna give us that edge and that's gonna get us over that hump and Stephen Jones is not willing nor allowing that move to happen the coaches can ask all they want Dak Prescott can ask all he wants but at the end of the day it's Stephen It's Steven and Jerry. Sometimes Jerry can want something. It's Steven. The conservative view of running this team is keeping this team conservative as far as wins go too. 
We're not going above and beyond because our front office is not going above and beyond because they just want to keep the status quo. 150% real, y'all. In my truth, I should say. In my truth. You may have something different, and I want to know what you guys got to say, okay? So make sure you hit the chat. Just blaze the chat up. Hit the chat up. Leave a comment. And let me know your raw and uncut because we're going to cover that in a mailbag special of the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast. And we're going to be going live a little more often now that training camp is officially starting this coming week. Thursday, I believe, is the first practice for the Dallas Cowboys, and we could not be even more excited. It's going down. The 2024 season is going down. And hopefully we can get some contracts going. Jerry, we can get some contracts going. Steven, we can get all this done before we go into the regular season. Because if we go into the regular season and we don't have C.D. Lamb, you're making it tough. You're making it hard. You didn't even draft a wide receiver. All right, let me let me stop. Let me stop. Well, you drafted Ryan Flournoy. You did, but we didn't draft a high pick. And real talk, a dope wide receiver can come out of the fourth, fifth, sixth round to keep it a buck. But anyway, these have been my thoughts. These have been my thoughts off the top of the dome. I truly appreciate every single person that has watched the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast. I truly thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for everybody that has kept my brother and my family in their prayers. Again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I am just thankful and blessed and humbled that you guys choose me as one of your Dallas Cowboy content creators. I don't have an inside of the star, y'all, but... I do have an insightful brain, and I know my Dallas Cowboys. I have rooted for my Dallas Cowboys for years, and I believe we all are on the same page. But with that, this has been your man, the Angry Cowboys fan. If you are not subscribed to the channel and you kind of like what I do here, Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you can be notified whenever I go live, release a video, or a podcast episode. If you liked what you heard in the podcast, drop a like on it. And like I said earlier, give me your raw and uncut in the comments section. All right, y'all. It's been your man. The Angry Cowboys fan. I'm going to have more content for y'all. Going to be doing more of the skits for the members. So if you want to be a member, all you got to do for $2 a month, hit that join button and just become a member and see what the others don't get to see. This is your man, the Angry Cowboys fan, and I'm out. Cowboys fan, you done made it through the entire video. But if you want more content, you can definitely go to this video right here. Or if you want the latest episode of the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast, you can go right here. But whatever you do, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. But remain DC for life.